Welcome back to the Bible in 90 days. We're on day 87, which is actually, I've got in parentheses here, it's, it, it's as if it's day 89. Our grace days we have used up so that those are the two extra days. If you look at the bookmark or at the schedule, there would be grace days on the bottom two. And so if we have used those already, they would be checked. And so we are actually on day 89. This day will be titled day 87 because it's day 87 on my bookmark. My bookmark is the king of this. You know, I, I, I haven't come up with anything. I've just been reading the Bible and reading this bookmark and, and doing what it says. And it's led, led me through this whole adventure of reading the entire Bible in 88 days <clears throat> it's been awesome it's been an awesome journey I hope you've enjoyed it I know there are a few of you who have persevered with me to the end and today today's reading is possibly the craziest reading of the Bible that there is we're reading the book of Jude which is one of J Jesus's brothers and then the Revelation. Jude is going to warn us about false prophets again. Um, in a timeless warning, you know, there were heresies that were starting in the first century. And since then, there have been so many heresies and so many, so many wrong thinking that, that where, where the devil wants to confuse us and make us follow something like Christ that isn't Christ so that we will be trapped okay what he doesn't know what he doesn't understand is God's justice now what and the crazy thing about that is that he understands it and he knows the outcome of everything but all he really can do is delay the inevitable and he's really good at that. And that's why, that's why Christ hasn't come back in 2,000 years. He hasn't returned to us yet. Because the devil still has some of God's children tied up in worldly things. And, and, and God is still creating children. So, so this, this war, this spiritual battle continues on. Now, um, in reading Revelation, it's a blessing. It, it's difficult to understand what a blessing it is and what the visions that John is shown mean. Um, I, I, I'm not of the school that we take everything literal or that we take... Er, 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 now, I do, I do believe the Word of God, but I don't take visions as literal prophecy. A lot of times visions are interpreted to mean something like what they're showing but they don't exactly mean that and, and and biblical language is sometimes so confusing that you know they didn't even understand what the old testament meant until jesus came back and they still don't they still deny it they still deny that jesus is the messiah and that you know <laughs> i mean for the same reason that that the uh the same for the same reason that the apostles the disciples didn't hear Jesus say that he was going to Jerusalem to die. They, he told him three or four times and they ignored him and even Peter rebuked him on the way. But I'm getting carried away again. I do that and that's my, that might have might have that might be the reason that some people haven't continued to read the Bible with us. but uh, so I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry if I ever get in the way, but I enjoy I, I just really enjoy it talking about the Bible and reading the Bible with you. Um, I love reading it by myself, but it's even better to have people with me. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're in the book of Jude. Jude, like I, like I said earlier, is one of Jesus' brothers. He is, I would imagine James would be the oldest. Uh, J Jesus was the oldest, right? Born of Mary. And, uh, you know, people say half-brother. I don't, I don't, I don't go half-brother. I have half-sisters. And they're not half sisters; they're sisters. They're full. They're sisters. I mean, they're they're my brother. They're my sisters. So they're they're not half brothers or sisters. So, and 
and half brother and what you're saying technically would to to say half brother what you're saying is joseph is not uh jesus's biological father so we're being incredibly technical with something and i don't care to be that technical with it so i say that jude is jesus's brother um and and as we talked about james was another one of his brothers i think that james would have been the oldest brother and jude jude would have possibly been the next oldest brother maybe the youngest brother who knows anyhow while jesus was ministering his brothers mocked him they were scoffers of him and so one of the most incredible things about jude is that jude is writing against scoffers from the standpoint of someone who used to be a scoffer if you read john 7 um, they, they were making fun of jesus about going to the F festival of booths and they were they were saying, why don't you go and shoot and do your do your powers there, <laughs> you know? And he's like, it's not my time. I've told you, I've told you that it's not my time. And you can kind of tell that there's some tension there. And then in Mark three, you have Jesus's mother and his brothers coming to get him from the crowd because they're saying that he has lost his mind. They're saying that Jesus has lost his mind. Um, that it, it's just a curious relationship that, uh, you, you know, God, I, th I think that God put a fog on Mary's mind or Mary, Mary maybe realized what Jesus, Jesus realized that Jesus would, um, cause you know, the prophecy of man, I'm getting carried away, but I want to continue this idea. So, so bear with me just for a minute for the prophecy that Jesus is, uh, Remember when they went to the temple and he said that he will also be a thorn in your side, Mary. Um, I think she finally, she probably wondered what that meant and was trying to delay that um, from happening, that, that thorn. And, and you know how Jesus often talked um, about not, uh, about it's not my time yet. And that's what he told his brothers in John 7. It's not my time yet. Well, when his time came and when everything happened, they realized it. And, and Jesus' brothers became leaders of the church in the, in the resurrection time. So, so when they believe, when they realized that Jesus was never, you know, it's just like Joseph and his brothers, you know. Um, they, they, didn't, uh, they didn't realize what, uh, what, what God was doing. So when we realize what God, God is doing, we should fall in line. And isn't that the story with all of us? Um, just like, yeah, we'll talk about that later. All right, so let's read the book of Jude. Um, he is writing to probably Jerusalem. I'm not certain, but uh, or maybe the surrounding places of Jerusalem. So let's jump into this. Jude, verse 1. A servant of Jesus Christ. He's a servant. And a brother of James. He, he calls himself James's brother, but not Jesus' brother. Now, everyone knows that James is Jesus' brother. That's what they call him. But Jude is a brother of James. So, to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. He writes really well. Verse 3, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write to and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the justice or pervert the grace of God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only sovereign and Lord. Verse 5. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later to destroy those who did not believe. Talking about Moses and the, um, in, the, in the wilderness. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their proper dwelling. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. 
In a similar way, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. They serve as an example of those who suffer the punishment of eternal fire. <clears throat> Verse 8. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. But even then the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare to condemn for him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Yet these people slander whatever they do not understand. The, and the very things they do not understand by instinct, as irrational, animal, as irrational animals do, will destroy them. Verse 11. Woe to them who have taken, away, uh, have, have taken the way of Cain. They have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. They have been, uh, they have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. Verse 12. These people are, are blemishes at our love feasts. At your, these people are blemishes at your love feasts, eating with you with, without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they are clouds without rain, blown along by the wind, autumn trees without fruit, uprooted twice dead. They are the wild waves of the sea, foaming up, in the, uh, foaming up their shame and wandering stars, for whom the blackest darkness has been reserved forever. Verse 14, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about them. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge anyone, uh, to judge everyone, and to convict them all of the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness and of all the defiant words the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Verse 16, these people are grumblers and fault finders. They follow their own evil desires, and they boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. Verse 17. This is the point of all of this, okay? He's, he's described these ungodly people. And now, he's going to give you a summary of what he said in, and tell you what you should do about this. Okay, so listen. Verse 17, but dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Christ, Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers who follow their own ungodly desires. So it's prophesied. These are the people who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in love, in God's love, as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Verse 22. Be merciful to those who doubt. And save others by snatching them from the fire. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. I don't like the way that reads. <laughs> I like the other versions better. <laughs> Verse 24. And this is the doxology right here. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, and power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. I love it. I, I absolutely love Jude's letter. It, 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 it has... It has things that spark your curiosity, and it has things that it, it has the gospel in it, and it has all of this. It, 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 it and it has a clear warning uh, that has continually been something that we have needed. I think Jude is Jude is a book that people leave alone. I mean, um, you, most people don't even know that Jude is a short name for the name Judas. Um, Ju uh, Judas was one of Jesus' brothers, and, and, and I think they're, they are listed in the Bible. Um, I can't remember exactly where, but 
I just love listening to Jude. I, I, I love that that one book. I wish he had written more. I, I wish we I wish we had more of his writing. He was he was talented. I love the introduction and I love the doxology and the things in between it are all it, like I said it, it it makes you want to study the Bible. <laughs> it's it, it's good. It makes me want to. I don't know about you. You might be sick of it after 90 days of reading this, but I've done this before and I love it even more this time than I did the last time. It's just great. So we're in Revelation now. Now, Revelation is written from the island of Patmos. It tells you that. Um, John is exiled in Patmos after, after you know, 60 years of, of dodging Romans and, and Jews and, and things. He's, he, he was the, the apostle that Jesus loved. He was the disciple of Jesus. And I'd say that, I'd say that John was a young man when Jesus was with him. He was probably... You know, I would imagine 14, 15, 16, but uh, who knows? Who knows how old he really was? He was he was the youngster. He, him and him and him and James were the ones that, you know, they were they were the fiery young dudes. So, uh, yeah, yeah, James and John, the sons of uh, sons of thunder. You know, uh, not uh, not James, Jesus's brother, the other James, the one that died in 44 A.D. Okay. So let's uh, let's read Revelation. Um, these are visions, okay? It, he clearly tells you, but I want you to listen. We're going to read 17 chapters, so we're reading the bulk of it, and then tomorrow will be just the blessing, just the end, and the and and then the new the new creation. So, so the way that Revelation is written is it's apocalyptic literature. Okay, we have read a lot of apoc apocalyptic literature, but this is the ultimate apocalyptic literature. It is the uh, a vision of the end, and I want you to think about this like it's a dream. Okay, it's a dream that hasn't come true yet, but it's a destiny. Okay, it's something that's pre uh, pre told. It's a it's a fourth telling of the spiritual okay so what i see is that what we see is the physical world and uh if we're materialists if we think that matter is all there is we deny the idea of a spiritual world that is happening outside of this now these revelations and dreams visions that all the prophets that we've read have have seen um, are are that spiritual world which we can't understand, and that's why God, Jesus taught in parables, and and, and um, he taught in parables, and he taught in story, but he 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 also taught in vision. He taught those things because it's difficult to explain heavenly things to material people because all we see is what we believe in 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 ultimate so to break that god uses visions like this okay so so let's read uh revelation in that spirit chapter one the re revelation from jesus christ which god gave him to show his servants that must take place uh, must soon take place he made them known by sending his angel to his servant john who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take, and take heart to what is written in it, because the time is near. Verse 4, John, To the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you whom... Uh, from whom, from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the things of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, 
To him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Verse 7. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, and even those who, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. And so it shall be. Amen. Verse 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Verse 9. I, John, your brother and companion to the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are yours in Jesus Christ, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, and white as snow, and his eyes were like a blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held the seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead. And now look. I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Verse 19. Write therefore what you have seen and what is now uh, what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are angels of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Chapter 2 To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, and that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come and come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Write to the, uh, to the one who is victorious. I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the, par in the paradise of God. Verse 8. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is first and last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do, uh, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you into prison and test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you, as li uh, uh, give you life as your victor's crown. Verse 11. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt by all at all by the second death. Verse 12, to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. I know, you, I know where you live, 
where Satan has his throne. Yet you, may, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who is put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Verse 14, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who thought Balak, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, so that they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you you all you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I shall I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Verse 17. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Verse 18. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, these are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like a blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and you are now doing more than you did at first. Verse 20. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she, mis, um, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. <clears throat> I have given her time to repent of her immoral immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways will strike her children dead, and then all the churches will know that I am he who searches the hearts and minds. I will repay each of you according to your deeds. 24. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose on any other burden on you except to hold on to what you have have until I come. Verse 26. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like pottery. I, uh, just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give that one Give that one the morning star. Whoever it has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Chapter 3. To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds, and you have reputation for of being alive. But you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what, did you have, uh, what you have received and heard, and hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know what time I will come to you. Yet, you. yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but I will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the keys of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I've placed you before an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have, my, have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, 
I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have, so that no one will take your crown. But to the, the one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in my temple of God, in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God, and I will also write on, on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Verse 14. To the angel in the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other, because you are lukewarm neither hot nor cold. I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth and, <coughs> and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me refi uh, gold refined by the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Verse 19, Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline, so be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they, will come, and they with me. Verse 21, To the one who is victorious I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Chapter 4 After the, this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had heard, I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once... I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven, and with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were twenty-four of uh, other thrones, and seated on them were twenty-four elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumbling, and pearls of, and peals of thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, as clear as crystal. In the center, around the throne, there were four living creatures, and, that they, and they were covered with eyes, front and back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox, and the third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. The, each of the four cr living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Verse 9. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay, they lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Chapter 5 Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a, a scroll, with the writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, 
Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth, under the or under the earth, could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Verse 6. Then I saw a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne, and then, and when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign for reign on the earth. Verse 11, Then I looked and heard the, heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne of the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. No amen, but <laughs> I was just saying, <laughs> like, amen. And the four living creatures said, amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Chapter 6. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror, bent on conquest. Verse 3. That when the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come! And another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given a power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. Verse 5. When the Lamb opened the third seal, I heard the, living cre the third living creature say, Come! And I looked, and before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. When I heard, And then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. Verse 7. When the Lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come! And I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. Verse 9. When, we, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the so word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. Verse 12, I watched as he opened the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth and made of goat hair. A whole, the whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in heaven fell to the earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heaven 
receded. Then the, the heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and, the mount, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can withstand it? Chapter 7 After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land, or on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of Gad, 12,000. From the tribe of Asher, 12,000. From the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. From the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. From the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. From the tribe of Levi, 12,000. From the tribe of Issachar, 12,000. From the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. From the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. And from the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000. Verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, there were where they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Verse 11. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Verse 13. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them in his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them. Nor, anything, nor, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to, the springs of living, to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Chapter 8 When he opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I saw seven angels who stand before, the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a golden censer came and, sto and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all God's people on the, on the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. And then the angel took the censer and filled it, with the fi filled it with the fire from the altar and hurled it onto the er on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Verse 6. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood. And it was hurled down on the earth. A third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. Verse 8. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, 
all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Verse 10. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky. And a third of the rivers on the, uh, and on the springs of water. The name of the star was Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Verse 12. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was with, was without light, and also a third of the night. 13. As I watched, I heard an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blasts about to be sounded by the other three angels. Chapter 9. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. And when the abyss and, and when he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and the sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss, and out of the smoke locusts came and down on the earth and were get, came down on the earth and were given power like that of scorpions, like the, that of the scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only to those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of a sting of a scorpion when it strikes. During those days people will seek death, but not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. Verse 7. The locusts looked at like horses preparing for battle. On their heads they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like a woman's hair, and their teeth were like a lion's teeth. They had breastplates like the bre- like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had wing they had tails and st- with stingers like the scorpions. And their tails, and in their tails they had the power to torment people for five months. They had, uh, they had as a king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in, his, in Greek is Apollyon, that is, destroyer. Verse 12, the first woe is past, and the other woes are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet. And I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It is said, it said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice ten thousand times ten thousand, and I heard their number. Verse 17. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of the lions, and and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, and their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. Verse 20. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent, still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk, nor do they repent of their murderers, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Chapter 10 Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven. He was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun, and his legs were like like fiery pillars. 
He was holding up a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and le his left foot on the land, and he gave a shout like the roar of a lion. When he shouted, the voices of the seven, th of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. Verse 5. Then the angel I had, I, had been, I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his hand to heaven, and he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and all that is in them, the earth and all and all that is in it, and the sea and all that is in it. There will be no more delay. But in the days when the seventh angel is about to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be accomplished, he, just as he has uh, announced to his servant, servants the prophets. Verse 8. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke one, to me once more. Go! Take the scroll that lies open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel, and I asked him to give me the little scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will turn your stomach sour, but your mouth will be as sweet as honey. I took, a little, I took the little scroll from the angel's hand, and I ate it. It tasted sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I, when I had eaten it, my t stomach turned sour. Then I was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Chapter 11 I was given a reed, like a measuring rod, and I was told, Go, measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshippers, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on it, the holy city. They will trample on the holy city for forty-two months. And I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for one thousand two hundred and sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands. They stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes out from, the, from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. They have power to shut up the heavens so that, that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying, and they have power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Verse 7. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt. And there also their Lord will be crucified for three and a half days. Uh, also their Lord, uh, where also their Lord was crucified for three and a half days, some of every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because of these two pro because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. Verse 11. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life, of, of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. And when they heard the loud voice from heaven say to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, while their enemies looked on. At that very hour there was a severe earthquake, and a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in, an, in the earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. Verse 15. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, the kingdom of the Lord has become the kingdom of our Lord. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Verse 16. And, and the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken 
your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry and your wrath has come. The time has come for judgment of the dead, for, for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants and uh, servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Verse 19. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and with his, within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant, and there, be, and there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. Chapter 12. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman, clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was, giving, oh, she was about to give birth. And then another sign appeared in heaven. An enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its head. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them into the earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the, the moment he was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child, who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God, where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Verse 7, Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But, she was, but, but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the, world, the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth, and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been hurled down. They, triumph over, they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb, <coughs> Excuse me. and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their, love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and to the sea because of the devil, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. Verse 13. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness, where she would be taken care of for a time, times, and a half a time, out of the serpent's reach. And then, from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away in the torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to, to, to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's command, and to hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Chapter 13 The dragon stood on the shore of the sea, and I saw the beast. I saw a beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns, seven heads, with ten crowns on its horns. On each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but it had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne in, and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have a, had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder following the beast and followed the beast. 
people worshipped the dragon because he had given, had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? Verse 5, The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. It was given the power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every, every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all those whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life the Lamb who is slain from the creation of the world. Verse 9. Whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone is to go into captivity, into captivity they will go. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, it will be the sword. If anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword they will be killed. Verse 13. Er, no verse. This calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the part of God's people. Verse 11. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, but it spoke like a dragon. It exercised the authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the earth and its inhabitants worship the first beast, whose fatal wound had been healed. And it performed great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven on to the earth in full view of the people. Because signs of because of the signs it was given power to perform on behalf of the first beast, it deceived the inhabitants of the earth, and it ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded by the sword and yet lived. The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the, which is the name of the beast or the number of its name. Verse 18, this calls for, the wis for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. That number is 666. Chapter 14. Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, who had, his, who had the na his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a sound from heaven like a roar of rushing waters, and like a loud peal of thunder. The, her, the sound I heard was like that of a harpist playing their harps, and they sang a new song before the throne and before our, the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins, and they followed the Lamb wherever he goes. There he, <clears throat> they were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Verse 6. Then I saw another angel flying in midair who had the, had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Verse 8. A second angel followed and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, which made all the nations drink the maddening wine of her adulteries. Verse 9. A third angel followed them and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead, or on their hand they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured out in full strength into the cup of his wrath, and they will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. 
and the smoke of their torment will rise for ever and ever. There will be no rest, day or night, for those who worship the beast and its image. For any one who receives the mark of its name, this calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Verse 14. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was the one like a, one like a son of man, with a crown of gold on his head, and a harp, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out from the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting in the, on the cloud. Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So now, who is seated on the cloud swung, he who is seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Verse 17. Another angel came out of the temple in heaven, and he, he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel, who had charge of the fire, came from the altar and called in a loud voice to him who had the sharp sickle, Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the earth's vine, because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung its sickle on the earth and gathered its grapes and threw them into the great winepress. Of God's wrath. They were trampled in the wine press outside the city, and blood flowed out of the press, rising as high as the horses' bridles, for a distance of 1,600 stadia. Chapter 15 I saw in heaven another, an another great and marvelous sign seven angels with seven last plagues. Last, because with them God's wrath is complete. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass, flowing with fire and, and standing beside the sea, who, those who had been, been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are worthy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Verse 5. After this, after this I looked... <clears throat> And I saw in heaven the temple, that is, the tabernacle of the covenant law. And it was opened. Out of the temple came seven angels with seven plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen, and wore golden sashes around their chests. Then one of the four living creatures gave to the seven angels seven golden bowls, filled with the wrath of God, who lives forever and ever. And the, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no one could enter the temple until the seven plagues of the, of the seven angels were completed. Verse 16. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. Verse 2. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly, festering sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead person, and every living thing in the sea died. The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And then I heard and they, the angel in charge of the waters say, you are just in these judgments, O Holy One, you who are and who were, for they have shed the blood of your holy people and of your and your prophets, 
and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord Almighty, true and just are your judgments. Verse 8, The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was allowed to scorch people with fire, and they, seared by, and they were seared by intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues, but they refused to repent and glorify him. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and its kingdom was plunged into darkness. People gnawed their tongues in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. Verse 12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather, gather them for battle on the great day of God Almighty. Verse 15. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so as not to go naked but be, and be shamefully exposed. Verse 16. Then they gathered the kings together with the place the, uh, that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and the, out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done! Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings of rumblings, peals of thunder and severe and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on the earth. So tremendous was the quake, the great city split into three parts, and city and the cities of nations of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the Great, and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away from the mountains coal, uh, uh, and the mountains could not be found from the sky huge hailstones each weighing about a hundred pounds fell on the on people and they cursed god on account of the plague of hail because the plague was so terrible chapter 17 one of the angels who had had seven bowls came and they said to me, had the seven bowls came to me and said come I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me, carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, where I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast and was covered with blasphemous names and had the seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a great mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes, and of abominations of the earth. Verse 6. I saw that the woman was drunk in the blood of the holy people of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore the testimony, bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw once was, now is not and yet will come out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth who chose names have not, been, have, not written, have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished when they see the beast, because it once was, now it's not, and yet will come. Now is not, and yet will come. Verse 9. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen. 
One is, and the other has not yet come. But when he does, he must remain remain for only a little while. The beast who once was and now is, now is not, is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going down and go, and is going to his destruction. Verse 12. The ten horns you saw are the ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom, but for one hour, but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. They have one purpose and they will give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will triumph over them, because he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and with him will, will be his called, chosen and faithful followers. Verse 15, The angel said to me, The waters you saw where the, pros- where the prostitute sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute, and they will bring her to ruin and leave her naked, and they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put into their hearts, put it into their hearts to accomplish this his purpose, and by agreeing to hand her over the beast their royal authority until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. I don't really want to stop. <laughs> I just can't really stop reading this when you when once you start. We will pause and <laughs> finish this up tomorrow. It's been an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Alrighty. And we're almost done. We're like two pages from the end of the Bible. We're almost done, guys. Tomorrow we got one, two, three, four and a half pages. Cool. Well, it's like I said, tomorrow we will go through... uh, Man, this is... It sucks to stop there and just like, cause the end, the end is so good. And that's, that just leaves you like, Oh no, what's happening? Like, like I'm telling you, these are visions of spiritual things that we can't understand if we want to. Um, I, I, I love a lot of prophetic talk and, and, and things like that, but there, man, there are some things that we can't know. Uh, we try and we try and put this together and, and make this something that our future holds. Look, some of this has been fulfilled already. Some of it hasn't been. It's already not yet. That's biblical prophecy. A lot of it is already. Man, life works in cycles. There is always a cycle to everything. All of this stuff has always been evident to what's going on, and it's meant to teach you that the Bible is true. And that and, and that God is real, and that these things are these things are actually happening, and that all of this is going to be the end of it. So choose the right side, right? And, and it's not even that because you must be shown that something needs to knock the scales off of your eyes if you're lost, and it and and that what that means is is that you need to search God. You need to knock on that door. You need to you need to find Him. Or else the end is, listen, the end is already written. <laughs> and this is awesome. This is, this is what people have been arguing about for thousands of years. Nobody can get it right. <laughs> well, brothers and sisters, thanks for you know, going with me through the whole Bible. We've just got a little teeny, teeny bit left to go through tomorrow. And then what we'll do is I'll, I'll finish, I'll, I'll just read those few pages tomorrow and then we'll incorporate the um, review in that. And I might separate that later and have them be two videos. But, uh, man, what, what a great accomplishment. Thank you for thank you for going with me. I say that like I'm done. I'm not done yet. We've got one more day to go. Day 88 will be tomorrow. <laughs> I just wanted to read those, those last few chapters and be done with it. But it's an awesome blessing. Well, God loves you, brothers and sisters. I love you too. 
Thank you so much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.